Episode 12 of the All-Wheel Drive uh, Mustang Project. It's been a little while since the last episode, but it's uh, not for lack of effort. Actually, just the opposite. I've been thrashing on the car and kind of pushing off the editing of the videos. But I have quite a bit of footage. And I've been focusing because, you know, I live in Minnesota and I knew I was running out of season before the snow flies here. And I wanted to get the car back on the wheels. Now let me preface that that I was gonna I want to drive it around, even though it wouldn't be all-wheel drive, right? I wanted to prove out the transmission and the shifter and the drive shaft and get the power tunnel complete, get the console back in, make sure the seats fit and the carpet, endless things that'll be covered here in the next couple of videos. And so I have literally just been thrashing on the car, um, and. The, Luckily, it all has been going pretty smooth. So this episode is going to be covering the power tunnel. Before I could finalize the shifter and uh, order the drive shaft, I had to get the thing, the transmission in its final position. And that required making a cross member and getting the hole in the floor filled and getting the height right. And so that's what I did first. And so um, let's get to it and I'll show you the progress. and what I've been doing for the last uh, month and a half or so. This ear on the side of the transfer case sticks out and follows the power tunnel here. So I gotta cut this off for clearance. <laughs> Here's the final modified. I kind of had to grind away the side of the transfer case to clear the power tunnel. Here's what it looked like before I cut it off. Obviously this is just a tooling ear. And there's actually a double pin inside here that clocks the back and front so you can't go too deep. But I took one apart and measured it and basically I'm putting smaller screws here and trying to cut this as short as possible. You can see here I was starting to break through actually. so. I should provide between that and maybe a little bit of uh, sledgehammer uh, performance on the side of the uh, power tunnel should uh, have adequate clearance. The biggest issue is this bump right here on the left side of the power tunnel. Uh, I still need to put the you know sound insulation back in it. It's hitting, so I might cut that whole bolt off. And it's hard to see. But there's also on top, there's like a reinforcement in the side of the power tunnel that's pretty close. Um, that I might have to do some sledgehammer massaging on. The It's still not centered in the power tunnel. It has to go to the left or the driver's side. So I've flapper wheeled this back as far as you can go while still keeping these two bolts. And it might be able to go just a little bit more here, but you know, there's a double pin right here that I, that I have to keep, or I really want to keep. Um, but it's still really close with my 10 degree clocking, it's still really close right here. So I'm convinced there's more than enough bolts here, and the ceiling surface is way down in here. So I'm just going to chop this off and lose one bolt, which is just plain not a big deal, and gain a lot of clearance inside the power tunnel. <laughs> I had to break out the Sawzall to uh, finish the cuts. Watching this video now, this looks really dangerous and I probably should have a glove on or something to protect my hand, but it all came out okay. Here's the cut before the flapper wheel, but uh, it actually turned out pretty nice. So here's the modifications to the side for tunnel clearance. Um, before I get any more aggressive with it, I'm going to put it back in the car. For reference, here is what it looked like originally. Here's a stock one with this big ear, these two bolts, and all this extra mass here. 
um, that basically hit the power tunnel so I couldn't center the, the transmission in the power tunnel. So next I'm going to cut this ear off which doesn't do anything it's just to, a little um, for splitting the two halves apart. I'm going to cut that off because that um, will cause some issues when I go to fill the floor back in. And I'm also going to cut this ear off here, which really isn't in the way, but it's just ground clearance. So there's not, once again, it doesn't do anything. It's just to be able to split the two sides apart. <laughs> So here in the power tunnel, even with my modifications to the transfer case, it was hitting the tunnel here and here. There's actually a little reinforcement plate here. So I just slid it, cut it, and pounded it flat with the main structure of the body. And then just a little massaging here. And so now I'll put the transfer case back in the car and see what kind of clearance I have. Okay, this is really hard to see, but now there is quite a bit of clearance between the transfer case in the body between cutting and uh, grinding away part of the transfer case and doing a little hammer massaging into the power tunnel. So now that the transmission is at the right angle and centered, um, I put this different uh, stand underneath it and got rid of the uh, transmission jack. And now I'm going to move forward with trying to, I'm going to put the transmission mount back on and start making the cross member. So here's the complete transmission mocked up with the transfer case in the car and the transmission mount. Um, I ended up cutting a little bit too much of the floor away to be honest between um, reclocking the transfer case and just being a little too aggressive. I'm going to try to fill some of that back in. But what I need is to be able to put some kind of mount right here um, to clear to be able to bolt. The, the, the cross member to um, that's what I'm going to work on right now so I uh, cut out and formed a piece of it's probably a little thick eighth inch steel to conform to the floor and I you know got the most of the paint around it off and I'm going to weld this in as a good base um, to then proceed on making my little base for the cross member <laughs> I'm actually going to reuse this piece. This is part of the transmission cross member um, retention system, if you will. That's part of the in the factory uh, body. This is like a captive nut that's up in the body. There's actually more more holes. Only two are used at a time. So I cut it shorter and I made this plate to weld it to and I'll make a little box to go around it and then weld it back to the body in the new position. Here's the captive nut welded to its cover and a little vertical piece that'll get welded to the body. So I welded a little piece back in the body here to kind of take up some of the space. And then this mount is going to weld right here and of course get gusseted back to the body and then there'll be a cross member that goes underneath the drive shaft and ties into this. I made a couple of gussets uh, for the mount and then made two starter plates to be able to weld the cross member to and bolted them to the body first. Starting to get the transmission cross member tacked together Got the two um, vertical pieces that go across in place tacked to the two plates here. Um, now I just need to make a plate that goes in between that actually bolts to the transmission mount. So that's next, but it's looking pretty good. <laughs>
got the transmission uh, cross member finalized um, ready for paint basically as you can see and well, I need to get some better bolts but as you can see it fits quite nicely it's uh, basically even with the bottom of the frame rails we want to call it unibody connectors and uh, now this is the front drive shaft here there's no diff in the car right now but I'm basically mocking up where it would be and kind of marked the body right here and I think just some creative hammering of the body right in here will let it clear I don't need to cut any more holes uh, I'm just going to fill in what I already have but as you can see it's you know it's looking pretty good the transmission cross member and the transmission mount I incorporated into the transfer case adapter is looking nice I got the shifter centered in the hole um, you can see there there is clearance between the side of the transfer case and the power tunnel and um, plenty over here also except for obviously where the transfer case is and so it's all all uh, coming together here so I'm gonna modify the body a little bit and then take this off and paint it and uh, she'll be good to go so I'm starting uh, to get ready to weld the tunnel shut and quite a bit of the welding will have to happen from the inside and since I'm just going to MIG weld it I was concerned about sparks you know the interior is in really good shape and obviously it's a new car so I went a little nuts here with this 3M um, spark and slag kind of deflection paper to protect the interior. Um, you know, not only from cosmetics, but you know, protect the wiring underneath the dash and etc. etc. to make sure I don't damage anything. The stuff's kind of expensive, but I have to say it, it uh, works pretty good here. It lays down really nice and it sticks reasonably well. It's like a big sticky uh, sticky back like a post-it note but uh, it's supposed to be able to handle some uh, spatter hitting it um, anyways more progress <laughs> So here's what the power tunnel looks like after pulling the transmission out. Um, pretty good, actually. So obviously it needs some more welding and some cleanup and, and paint and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, pretty happy with the results. So continue on, little hammering, little welding. I'm going to fill this piece in and try to make this look a little nicer. Obviously got to fill in these holes, but uh, I'm pretty excited. Excellent progress. There's the bottom done. Needs a little bit of maybe some sanding, some primer, maybe some undercoating. But, uh, and most of the factory heat shield will fit back on. But uh, looking pretty sweet. I'm going to do a few tweaks on the inside and uh, put on some paint. So now that I have the steel of the body modified, I bolted on this heat shield slash sound, I don't know, sound insulation, I guess it would be. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I can cut it back um, to keep as much of it as possible. Yet, um, obviously, have clearance for the drive shaft and the transfer case. So I'm just going to start marking it with a marker and cutting it away, and I'll show you what it looks like after we're all done. That doesn't look too bad. Clearance for the future drive shaft spot there and obviously for the transfer case 
And uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Figured I'd try to show. Here's the carpet back in the car. Sorry the lighting isn't great here. Um, so it's a little bunched up where the bump is, obviously. Um, but, you know, it lays in there pretty well. And then once I get the console back in, let's see here, once I get the console back in, this will pop in there like that and cover it up even more. And once you get the seat in, I think it'll be basically unnoticeable. Um, yeah, so I'll get the seat in next here. And then once the interior is completely in, I want to drive it around before I put this console back in. Um, so I can adjust the shifter and everything, and then I'll get it complete and take another shot here, a snapshot. But I'm pretty excited about this, so I had to get some footage. This is really turning out nice. One last shot here. I had to little, do a little trimming on my Ford Motorsports here Mustang um, floor mats, and that kind of actually helps cover up the crease in the carpet. I just notched it around the bump and you know once again you put the seat in a normal position and you know you'd really have to point it out to notice it but uh, anyways everything's coming together looking great well that's it for this episode once again just great progress i uh, hope you appreciate that and there should be some more videos coming out relatively soon next couple of weeks with some more progress um, but once again if you find these interesting like and subscribe um, Click that little icon so you get the bell when new videos come out. I'm having a lot of fun making the videos. And more importantly, I'm having a lot of fun interacting with uh, the people uh, who have been asking questions. So if you have any questions, post them. And I'll try to answer them. But any comments at all, let me know. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.